In today's episode, we are going to cover 10 ways that you can monetize your podcast. Welcome to Podcasting Tips and Tricks with Lyndall Harris, a show sharing quick, actionable tips, tricks, and advice to help you on your podcasting journey. Hello, hello, and welcome back to another week. It's really great to have you here. I can't believe we're up to episode five of the show already, and I just wanted to say a massive thank you for all the support. I've received really lovely reviews, some great messages, and just lots of support since I launched launched my show. So I just wanted to say a big thank you to you all. It's funny, it's it's been a good lesson for me to actually walk in the shoes of my clients now. Um, I did have a good understanding because I've spoken to so many podcasts about that imposter syndrome and that fear and how the nerves and the excitement and the adrenaline and all of those emotions that you feel when you're about to launch your show. And now I can actually say that I know how they feel. So I'll put my hand up and say that I am definitely learning on this journey as well as I go. So yeah, thank you for coming back to listen to another episode. If this is your first time here, then a big hello to you. My name is Lyndall Harris and I am the host of this podcast, brought to you by Podcast VA. And I work with podcasters to help make that podcasting journey easier by offering done-for-you services as well as training. I also wanted to let you know that I run an active Facebook group for podcasters. It's called the Australian Podcasters Collaborative, and it's a group for new podcasters or anyone who's thinking about launching a show right through to seasoned podcasters. And it's really just a nice sort of collaborative place for podcasters to connect and learn and ask questions and share the journey as they go. So I'd love you to head over there and join. It's called the Australian Podcasters Collaborative. And also we've actually started accepting people from overseas as well. So if you're not in Australia, feel free to jump in as well. So on to today's topic where we're covering 10 ways that you can monetize your podcast. I get asked this question all the time. How do people make money from their podcast? Where's the return on investment? And each case is different, but I'm going to take you through 10 popular ways that people make money through their podcast and give you an idea of how you might be able to implement these into your show. Now, we're not going to go into the nitty gritty of how each one of these works, and I can cover those in future episodes if you would like, but I'm going to give you a top level view of ways that podcasters are making money through their show. And of course, that is going to be different for business podcasts as opposed to the hobbyist entertainment style podcasts and also what people's objectives are because some people will just want to cover production costs, whereas others might want to make podcasting a full-time job. So let's jump into the 10 ways that you can make money from your show. The first way we're going to talk about is advertising and sponsorships. And this is probably the first thing you think about when you're looking at ways to make money from your podcast. And it can be a slightly tricky one because this one often works on your numbers and your download numbers. A lot of advertisers or sponsorships look at your cost per mille, which is your CPM. And cost per mille just means cost per thousand downloads. So mille is thousand. And if you've got big numbers, that can work really well. And it's an interesting one because we also know that you can have a fairly small audience that's really engaged, but yet you kind of need the numbers to make this calculation work. So there are actually different podcast ad networks out there that connect you with advertisers. They do a lot of the work of finding the advertisers, negotiating the rates, getting the script and all of that kind of stuff. But you usually do need a larger audience for that of about five to 10,000 downloads per episode to make that work. You may also have heard of dynamic ad insertion, which is really popular way of including ads into your episodes. A lot of the hosts actually offer this now and it's about putting in a cue point. And the good thing with the dynamic ad insertion is that it means that the ad will always be relevant. So as opposed to when you used to record the ad into the show, it means in, you know, if I'm listening to it in three to five years time, I'm not going to be listening to an old ad that's not relevant anymore. So it's a fairly simple approach of doing it. You can find mostly in your hosts now, I think most hosts are doing it. So if you look up the help section there, um, you'll be able to find more on dynamic ad insertion. Another note here though, on the sponsorships. Now I've got a client who 
started a show, had a very engaged audience. And so she actually just personally reached out and asked some of her networks who had a similar audience if they would like to sponsor one or two or three of her episodes and gave them a per episode price. And for that, she listed out what they would get and what her social reach was. So don't feel that if you're starting a show, you can't start with having a sponsor. It's about thinking about how it all works. Think about your social reach and you can also go directly to them and pitch them rather than you don't have to go through an ad network or do it through dynamic ad insertion or some formal sort of structure. The second way we're going to talk about today is courses and memberships. So many popular podcasters create their own online courses and memberships to teach what they're talking about on their podcast. So uh, for example, if I had a social media podcast, I might have online courses around all the different social media platforms. I might have a membership. It's just a good way to to make money off the back of the podcast and, and the podcast has something to funnel into as well. The third way is offering services and consulting coaching services. So again, you might offer that done for you service or you might offer consulting and coaching. So again, I'll use the example of the social media podcast. You're obviously educating people and letting people know what the latest trends are and all sorts of things about social media. You could then offer a done-for-you service packages, or you could go in and do some consulting on a digital marketing strategy for people. Number four is books. So lots of popular podcasts are leveraging book sales. Um, and I guess it, it books can be a bit of a strange one because sometimes they you might write a book and it doesn't necessarily make you a lot of money, but it can be really good in increasing your authority. So yeah, books is another way. And I've got a couple of clients who have done really great hack with creating books and eBooks. And that is that they go and they transcribe episodes of their podcast that are all about a similar topic and then they pull them all together and they edit that into a book or an ebook that they can sell. So that might be a way that you can use your podcast to repurpose the information into a book. Number five is physical products. Now the physical products might be a little bit more aimed towards the hobbyist um, entertainment style, but there's things like t-shirts and mugs and you know all sorts of other bits and pieces that you can sell that are branded um, for your podcast. Number six is crowdfunding and donations. So you can ask for donations to help support your podcast and your show. So a really common platform for this is Patreon. And they do make it really easy to to sign up and, and have an account. And they also offer you some additional bonuses or additional ways of using it where you can give people who do donate to you extra content or bonuses, depending on how much they give you. So there can be different levels. So, and you can even have a thing there with um, an RSS feed that is for paid only subscribers. So, which ties in nicely with the next method, which is number seven, and that is offering premium content. So premium content is something that is not out there to the general public to consume, but if you can offer additional interviews, behind the scenes content, early access to the to the feed or Q&A with the host. There's a whole sort of range of premium content that you can add in there. Number eight is affiliate marketing. And you would hear a lot of affiliate marketing on podcasts. Typically, it's where Um, you earn some money if somebody makes a purchase, if you've signed up to get a commission. So if I was referring you to, let's say, Audible for one of a better example, then I would make money if you signed up through my referral link for Audible. Number nine is events. So hosting events is a great way to make money. And it's also a great way to bring your fans and your community together and give them even more value. So that might be in the way of just social events. It could be conferences. It could be, there's lots of different examples there. So events is another way that you could do that. And last but not least is public speaking. Many podcasters are approached for speaking gigs in their industry and it makes sense because if people 
can go and listen to your podcast, hear what message you spread. They get to hear the tone. They get to see how you speak. They may well reach out and see if you will speak at a conference or a live event. Now, we know podcasting is amazing at honing your speaking skills as well. It's a really good exercise and experience in getting more confident in speaking. Now, obviously, you're not speaking to a room full of people, but with the microphone in front of you and just practicing and practicing, it does become an easier form of art. Speaking is also another great way to increase your authority, as well as getting exposure to a whole new audience that will hopefully become your future podcast listeners. So you may start with going and speaking at events and things for free while you build up your experience, but then a lot of podcasters do move into that paid speaking role as well. I hope that gives you some inspiration to think about some ideas and how you might be able to do some of these for your podcast. It is a question I get asked all the time, how do you make money from your podcast? And it can be difficult. And sometimes you've just got to think outside the box and think a little bit beyond the the obvious sponsorships and ad roles and things like that. So they're some of the ways that uh, can get you started. I guess it really depends on your podcast, your audience, your experience and a whole lot of other things. And just a reminder here that if you're a coach or a consultant or you're in the business podcasting space, you might actually look at the um, selling your services, your products, the coaching sessions, affiliate marketing and sponsorships, whereas the entertainment or hobby style podcast may find it easier to ask for donations, sell merchandise or have premium content. So now I've given you 10 ideas about how you can start monetizing your podcast. We'll just do a recap on what they are. So number one is sponsorship and advertising. Number two is courses and memberships. Three, services and consulting or coaching. Number four is books. Number five is physical products. Number six is donations and crowdfunding. Number seven is offering premium content. Number eight is affiliate marketing. Number nine is events. And 10 is public speaking. If you have got any more questions, please send me a message through social media or join the Facebook group, the Australian Podcasters Collaborative and ask there. I have been receiving some really great reviews in Apple Podcasts and I'm going to share some of these with you in the upcoming episodes. As you know, sometimes it's a little confusing to know who you are from your iTunes name. So if it is you and I haven't been able to identify you, please reach out and let me know and I'll include a link to your show in the show notes. This week is a review from Kim O'Gorman and Kim is a marketing specialist. Her website is kimogorman.com.au. Her review is, for ages I've wanted to start a podcast but saw it as a huge job. Lyndall's podcast breaks it down and makes it feel more achievable and I feel confident as I start planning a podcast for 2020. So thank you for that, Kim. That is awesome and I'm really excited to listen out for your podcast next year. Thank you so much for hanging out again. Uh, I have another great episode for you next week. It's an interview with Suzanne Chadwick from the Connection Exchange. And we talk a whole lot of things about how to use a podcast to amplify your brand. And she shares some fantastic tips for growing your show. I look forward to chatting to you then. Have a great week. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed the show, make sure you subscribe in your podcatcher so you don't miss an episode. And whilst you're there, I'd love it if you'd leave me a rating and review to help other podcasters.